You ready? Yeah. Can we talk? Yeah. Is it gonna go? All right. What are we making? I have no idea. <laughs> What's that word right there? Pantograph. We're making a pantograph. <laughs> I can't do this. All right. Here's our plan. What's this thing right here? The. A yardstick, yes, a yes. wooden yardstick, and get them at Lowe's for about a dollar. This is what we're going to be building. This is going to be a pantograph that will enlarge your drawing by two. You know what a pantograph is? No. All right, we're going to learn it. We're going to figure it out. All right, this is some of the stuff we're going to use. What's this, Molly? A saw. Yeah. What kind of saw? It's a miter saw. Helps you cut angles. Mm -hmm. What's this? A knife or something? Some kind of utility knife. It's called a, um, a clamp. Clamps. Yeah. A little piece of sandpaper, pencil. pencil. Some kind of a dowel rod. You can kind of pick your size. We're using 3 16 A drill bit that matches that dowel rod. Pencil sharpener. And these are, these are called uh, Chicago screws. You don't have to use these. These are a, a stud and a screw. I happen to have, you could use regular screws and nuts, or even nails probably, but we're going to use those because they're easy to, they work easy and we, there's a drill bit there that matches those. And well, the most important part, a wooden yardstick from Lowe's. You could make this with the yardstick just like it is, but it's kind of, it's a little bit wide and uh, we thought we might make two of these at the same time. So we're actually going to split our yardstick in half on a table saw. Not necessary, but I think it'll make it look a little better, a little trimmer. Okay, we split our yardstick into two pieces, just so it's a little smaller, a little easier to work with. This is our cutting diagram. So how long is the first piece going to be, Molly? 12 inches. And where would, where would we cut it on here? 12 inches? Or? How do you know where 12 inches is? Oh, it's already marked. So we're going to cut one piece at 12. Where's the next piece going to be cut at? Right here. At 24. Now what's six more inches? Mm. <laughs> um, wait. 30. Yeah. And then the last piece, will, how long will it be? To here, right? To there, it'll be six inches. Two 12s and two sixes. And you don't have to like, you know, it's already you marked. It's already marked. You don't have to use tape measure. Yeah, so. you don't have to use a tape measure. So. Okay, let's start cutting. First piece at 12, 12 inches. Exactly. Hold that with your thumb. Keep pressure hard right here. Keep this up against the back. Keep it really tight. And, and start sawing really flat. You can push down a little harder. Pieces, so where are we going to cut it now? 30. You sure? Mm, I'm not sure. Make sure you're right dead center on 30. Is that it? Go back that way right there. Hold down on it. Jack, what are we doing? Go drill some holes in there, right? Yeah. This drill bit matches those screws we're going to use. What's this tool called? Drill press. Yeah. You got a little drill like this, right? Right. Have you tried drilling holes with it before? Yes. Did it work good? Yes. Eh, not so much. But if that's all you have, it will work. But since we got a nice drill press, let's use the nice drill press. I'm going to zoom in and see if you look here, that piece of wood I put on there. I made it so that the wood can't spin out of your hand. 
And when we bring this drill bit down, it's gonna go right in the center of that, of that ruler. We want our holes to be right in the middle. See? It's right in the middle. All right. Now we're gonna drill a hole a half an inch in from this end and a half an inch in from this end down here. I'll help you line it up. So you know where to turn it on? Bring your drill bit down really slow so I can make sure we're lined up. All right, bring her down. A little more. Put your hand on the end of those knobs out there. Drill hole. Easy. Keep going. All right, you're all the way through. Let it go up. Let go. We'll go back out. Now get doing on this end. Come down easy till we get our mark. Whoa, slow down. Right there. Push. All right, now we gotta do all the other sticks. Turn it off. See, one more little scrap of wood. This is a little piece of uh, three quarter inch, I don't know, inch and a half, just a little scrap. We're gonna drill a hole in the center of it. We're gonna use this clamp to hold onto that piece of wood so it doesn't go flying out of her hands. Let's drill a hole right in the center of that, Molly. Just hold the whole clamp down like this, that way your hand's not touching that piece of wood. Go turn the drill on. That's it. All right, back to the bench. Get a little block of wood. This is our, our uh, dowel, 3 16 dowel. We're gonna cut a piece that'll stick in here. We're gonna cut it off about that tall for now. Yep. Come on, Mom, get your utility now. I'm gonna show you. Do what? <laughs> I'm gonna show you. When you wanna cut a piece of dowel rod, get it over close to the edge, put this down, and then just roll it like that with your knife. And it'll cut it really, keep it straight though. Gotta find that little slit you made. Right there? Let me see. <laughs> Where yeah, right in there somewhere. It don't have to be exact. It's kinda... Keep it, push down on the knife. Put this hand like this and roll the dowel rod while you're pushing down. <laughs> it's hard. Well, it helps if you get back towards the edge a little bit. Here. Now you got some room to roll it. Just roll it and push down hard. Here, let me show you. I didn't do it. I really should. Push your knife down there. When you roll it, if you're pushing down hard, it only takes a couple of times and you cut it right off. Mm -hmm. See? And it cut it pretty straight. Is that an ideal? We're going to glue that in here. With this one. <laughs> yeah, we just got some regular wood glue. All right, we need another piece of this, about the same length as the first piece we cut. And you can see we already we put some uh, wood glue in there. We've glued our first one in the block. Let's cut another one. Back up towards the edge of the table would be a lot easier. Push down hard. Keep the knife in the same spot or you're going to make a big mess. <laughs> Keep going off. I didn't? No. <laughs> You should do this. <laughs> Alright. Get your pencil sharpener sure. and put a point on there just like it's a pencil. Really? Yep. Uh, what work? Do it down here in front of the camera so they can switch it down. Yeah. Don't break it, just take it easy. This is gonna be our stylus, is what we're gonna call this piece. Okay. Do you know what we're making yet? No. It's fun making something you have no idea what yeah. it's gonna be, right? Is that sharp? Oh, no. Yeah, that's good. Hold on. I've seen a point. Don't sharpen it too much. We want the length to stay about the same. Okay, now what? All right. We need to drill one more hole in these long pieces. And if you want this to be to do, to uh, enlarge by a factor of two, 
then we need to transfer the length between these two holes over to the, to our long ones. We'll drill another hole in these long ones, and the easiest way to decide that is if you lay these on there. In this case, we need to drill another hole at five and a half on the long one. So we'll do that on both of these. And after you've made this and experimented with it, you can drill holes at different points and change the scale factor of of uh, your drawings. So, right there's what we're building. We went ahead and our spare set of parts, we went ahead and put it together just so we had everything worked out. So now we're going to go ahead and put together this one. Come on, Molly. Let's just try to lay our parts out just like that is. So try to copy that so we get all of our holes in the right place. Over here. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Let's just figure out our parts because we're going to change a couple of holes. Like that, right? Mm -hmm. This hole here for our stylus, we went ahead, our original one was a little bit loose, so we went ahead and made a new one out of quarter inch dowel, and so we're going to have to enlarge these two holes to quarter inch. And then the hole on the end, we had to enlarge to, to fit a pencil, and you're just going to have to figure out what size drill bit where you can kind of press fit a pencil in there. Too tight and you're going to split your wood, but we just experimented until we got it to fit in there tight. So, we're going to fix these two holes, and we're going to make this fit a pencil, and then we'll put it together. Okay, we went to the drill press again, we changed this to a quarter inch for our new stylus, mm -hmm. and we picked, we made this one where it'll fit a pencil. So now we're going to put it together. So we're going to put this one? No, put that on the bottom. Oh, whoops. We're using those Chicago uh, screws and studs, they're pretty handy. Is it supposed to not fit? Yeah, it'll, it's kind of tight. Just push it down on there a little bit. It's going to turn right, right? Mm-hmm. Go in. Not going in. Turn in the wrong way. Out. You said that's the right way. You said turn it right, and I said yes, but you were turning it oh. left. <laughs> Oops. All right, it don't have to be tight. Is that good? No. Yeah, that's good. Now we'll do this joint over here. We're copying the, our example up here we did ahead of time. See, Molly, she's 11, so some of the stuff you may want your parents to help, because if you push too hard or the wrong way, you're going to crack crack your wood. This is a pretty tight fit on purpose. So kind of twist it in there. I wanted it tight, that way we could pick the height of it. Another one's really easy. Now this bottom piece, I want it to be able to spin a little bit, so I'm going to go back to the drill press, and we're going to loosen this one up a little bit so that it'll flex a little more. I want one of them to be stiff, one of them to be loose. Back in a sec. All right, we just reamed this on the same drill bit up and down a couple of times to make it a little looser. So Go ahead and see if you can put it in there now. Just kind of turn it, you said? <coughs> yeah, just push these two together like that. About like that? Yeah. Then we're going to put this piece about. In that corner, the peg on the corner, we're just using for kind of a height adjustment. Like that? We're gonna sure. we're gonna put a rubber band underneath there, probably just so that it doesn't want to drop. Oh, it okay. This point will go okay. over here on our stationary block. Now the last part is we're gonna put a, a pencil in here. Again, you may have to have your parents help you with that because if you push too hard, you're gonna crack the wood, but it's not too bad. When we get done putting this together, we're gonna go try it, go back to the house and try it out. So, let's... This one uh, dowel we had, it's kind of a, just to keep everything level. It, it doesn't fit real tight. Like when you let go, it, the corner of this wants to drop, and we want this to stay all relatively level. So, 
We've got a couple of rubber bands from, uh, what's it from? Um, our limb, like pretty much rubber band bracelets and stuff. Okay, rubber band bracelet type things. We're just going to loop it on there a few times, just so this dowel doesn't keep sliding. And probably use small hair ties too, a bit of rubber. Yeah, just something that will keep that from falling, falling so easy. That works good. <laughs> now we put the pencil in. The pencil. It's kind of a press fit. If it's really tight, you're going to split your wood. But Ours fit. What I'm shooting for is having all this being oh, wrong way. Having all this being pretty much level. Do you have a clue what it's going to do yet? draw something. I don't just, know. Just draw something. I don't know. All right, we'll set one up and we'll start learning how to use it. Yay! <laughs> now the block we had with our peg glued in it, this can't move. So we've got our tail down with just a little clamp. You could make that block bigger, stack books on it or something like that. And I'll zoom in there. You can see we've drew a couple of just random shapes there on our paper. And what Molly's going to do She's never done this. This is her first try. We got our paper tape down so it don't move. Mm -hmm. You're going to hold the pencil, but you're going to look at that. And you're going to move the pencil without looking at it. And you're going to make this little stylus follow that line over there. Mm -hmm. Don't push down hard on the pencil. Just lightly hold it down here at the bottom like you would hold a, a pencil. Now look at the stylus, though. Okay. And try to make it follow that line exactly. Take a little practice. This is your first try, so. Not doing bad? It's doing fine. Well, don't look at it until you're done, and you'll see. Do I stop here? Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> well, move bad. it all the way. Let's show them what we did. That's bad. No, it's not. <laughs> it's so light that the camera's not going to pick it up. There. It made a copy of the first star, but exactly twice as big. It's just this clear. The person made it hard. Well, in the days before copy machines, your great grandpa, if he wanted to make a drawing bigger, this was one of the ways they did it. And, and the more accurate you draw your holes and the, the more accurate your pantograph is, you know, the better your drawing is going to be, too, so. I'm not very good at it, though. Well, it takes some practice. Does ever this uh, thing here get, do you have to sharpen every once in a while? No, it's just following the line. It's not important. practice with it a little bit and we'll try to maybe show some more examples of what we come up with but that's the idea pretty cool we kind of discovered when we was experimenting with this that this one is set up with the pencil to the left so if you were left-handed you may prefer it that way and we took the other one and we flipped all the components over and put the pencil on the right and made this one be it would be handier for a right-handed person like you see there Molly she's got a dolphin on hers <laughs> This one, uh, dog. it's a copy of that dog on the front of that book. We also discovered that using the rubber bands is great for the dowels because if you're trying to copy something thick like a book, yeah, you kind of have to raise everything up a little bit so it stays level, so it works well. But, Your dog is awesome. All right, what do you think, Molly? Is that a fun project? Mm-hmm. Hmm? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's it called? A... Pantograph? Pantograph. Pantograph. Alright, that's it. See ya. <laughs>